Welcome back to Talk Solar, the chat show where we share our local views of news catching our eye and a few national and international ones too. too. Joining me on the sofa today are Daz Stevens and radio presenter Holly Loveland of UK Talk Radio. Now, is there enough guidance, support and opportunities to come together for small business owners and entrepreneurs? According to Jane Goddard of East Cows in a letter to the county press, there isn't and hasn't been in the nine years she's been growing her now successful business. Jane has decided that she wants to do something about this and help small businesses and entrepreneurs. More in a moment about this. So are small businesses and entrepreneurs expecting too much or is it far too daunting and uh, difficult for them? Uh, Holly, you know, if you, if you, uh, I don't know if you've ever dreamt of, of starting your own business or going into business, but do you, would, you, would you find that a daunting task? Do you think you have to be very brave and a risk taker to, to even think about doing that? I feel like it'd be a lot of work, a lot of um, dedication, motivation. Uh, yeah, definitely be very hard, very daunting, especially for someone who has no idea what she's doing half the time. I feel like that's a quite big risk to take is yeah. to start any business. But if you want to do it from the ground up, it's you need a lot of help and you know you need to have it all planned out and take patience and let it all kind of take time to get to where you want to be. Now, I want to make sure I get this statistic right, um, Holly, uh, Daz, but um, I, I did hear recently around 70, I think it's about 70 to 80 percent of new businesses, small businesses or, you know, new businesses um, fold up within the first two years. And that, that, that's awful for the person who's, you know, that's their dreams, isn't it? That's their aspirations. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's a high figure, isn't it? Yeah, uh, presumably they would have put a lot of their own uh, uh, cash into that and uh, mm. uh, it's a daunting prospect to start a business in the first place but listening to those statistics you know it's so, something I would never consider consider and you need all the help you can get mm. you know from banks and uh, and these agencies that 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 do that are supposed to help you set up a business uh, you know yeah well, Jane Goddard's been going for nine years with her business, and she's, she's doing really well now. Um, and she said all support streams for small businesses have been cut dramatically or cut altogether. Um, she said everything, that's, everything that she suggested to the local authorities has been declined. She said, I've tried uh, to tap into lots of groups who used to support small business. I've even tried to get a small shop, or I aim to support people by providing a drop-in centre. And she said um, it was... Uh, or decline. So she's decided that she wants to um, advise and help people um, so they can get in contact um, with her. She said, um, we need to grow the economy, we need to get people back to work, we need to work together. Um, and I think also, you know, she wants to make the Isle of Wight more pro-business. Um, so obviously we, we want people to move to the Isle of Wight as well, surely. Um, but. Uh, I mean, I mean, do you know anybody who's been successful with their own business or, or unsuccessful, Daz? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm a good old friend of mine. She she set up a business as a as a dog groomer, you know, and, right. uh, and uh, it, it ran until such time that she she lost interest, you know. But but she was. Uh, I, I can remember reading up on it all, and uh, she had a huge book from Lloyd's Bank about starting up a business. You know, she she done re really well. I mean. Perhaps uh, that was in a different climate, you know. Uh, that was that. I mean, talking thirty years ago. Yeah. Perhaps it's more difficult now. You know? It's definitely recession-proof, isn't it? Dog grooming. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you know anybody who's had a bad experience? Do you know anybody that's that, that, that's that struggled? Or, um, f for example, you see like cafe, coffee shops, and sandwich shops that open on the high street, um, independent ones, and then you know a year later or six months later, they're not there anymore. It's awful, isn't it? Mm. There's so many of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in my hometown, if, if it's a charity shop, it, it, it's, it, it's fine. It seems to thrive. But, but uh, you, don't, you don't find any other new, new kind of businesses coming in very often. I think we've had about, in, in the 15 years I've lived there, uh, three or four different bicycle mm. shops. All of them have shut down mm. in that time. Mm. And they're now lying empty. Holly, do you know anybody who's got their own business or who's started their own business or, you know, successfully or unsuccessfully? My dad did. Well, yeah, he's not, he's kind of packed it in now. He works for someone else, but he, yeah. um, he's a plumber. So he had his own, had his own arm um, van, had his own, and he did everything himself. Like he 
he called, called out to jobs, they paid him, he yeah. did the work, etc. Um, and I think, I don't know why, I can't remember why now he stopped and then now he works for somebody else. But he had it for about five, six years. Mm. So, yeah, and he was really successful when, in his time. Just maybe just couldn't do it anymore and just wanted to just not mm. have all that pressure of trying to run it but he was successful he had business cars he was going up to london to do work he was he was pretty he wanted busy. to be challenging because that you know what mm. would life be without a challenge but we don't want it to be daunting and hostile for people do we mm. no and what about you know we've got programs on tv now like dragon's den haven't we mm. i don't know when the new series is i don't know if there's going to be another series um programs like that do they make it are they a help or do they just make it look more daunting or are they just entertainment? I don't know if you're yeah, a fan. I'm not familiar with Dragon's Den, but uh, it's, <laughs> but um, uh, I just wondered how... Eaton's eyes, you know, when she's, yeah. when she's, when she's mm. you know, and, and what's the other guy? Um, oh, Peter, Peter Jones, those eyes, they go right through you, don't they? they mm. yeah, I just wonder how many of the uh, successes on Dragon's Den are, are still... Uh, Operating as a business, you yeah. know, you, you don't get to hear of that. You know. No, a bit like Britain's Got Talent and X Factor. Yeah. Um, how many of those people that, that were famous for about a six months or a year? What happened what to Michelle but Manis? I liked her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to do you remember Rowetta? About oh, 12 years ago, she looked a bit like Diana Ross, um, Afro-Caribbean lady. But I think yeah. she was Birmingham. I think I do. With big bouffant hair. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure she still makes a living, but uh, I don't know what no. what mm. she's doing now. Um, I'm sure she can still attract attention. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but you're, yeah. you're right, Jonathan. Yeah, it's, uh, um, you, you, you never get to hear of them uh, again, do you? Mm -hmm. Right, now, uh, keeping with that entrepreneurial spirit now and uh, all things uh, celebrity, Josh Barry, a, a university student from East Cowles with cerebral palsy who spent two years writing a radio documentary using only his nose and an iPad, has had his documentary launched at an event attended by over 140 people on the island and hosted by broadcaster John Hannum. The documentary is about the agents behind some of the nation's biggest stars. This is interesting, isn't it? A documentary this time not about the stars, but about their agents. What celebrity's agent would you be, in, would you be fascinated um, to talk to? So this, this young guy has written this documentary with, it, uh, with his nose uh, and an iPad. Um, doesn't have the use of his hands, and he's, uh, it's all about the agents of um, celebrities. Now, we don't hear much about those, and I'm sure they've got some stories to tell. Who, I mean, who, who are your I mean, do you have any celebrities you'd love to meet, uh, Holly? Who are, your, who are your top three? Too many to list. <laughs> Too many to list. Too many to list. I've met some of them already, but they're all in bands. Um, uh, you've met yeah, quite a many. few, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about talking to their agents? Do you think that would be interesting? Do you think you'd find out any more about about them? And I mean, what's it like to be an agent of someone who's really well known? Now, in order to talk to their agent, you've actually got to get close enough to their agent. <laughs> That's where I've not had the I've not ever been that close or that far. But to their agent, I wouldn't know where to start. I don't think mm. it would be quite cool to meet one of their agents, though. But I don't think I'd, I've never been that close. I've never gotten in. No. to get that far to no. see an agent, so no, I wouldn't. Have you got a dream, yeah, Daz, to meet anybody in, in particular, or have you already met um, one or two people that you've uh, and fulfilled that dream? I, I've met very few celebrities, and, uh, mm. but uh, I, I don't know, it was um, uh, Pele, uh, that, that, that would have been a nice one, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, Which? Pele, Pe the, the footballer Pele. Well, well, oh, I'd right, okay. love yeah. to meet meet someone like that. And, uh, 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 yeah, it's uh, uh, probably too many to mention. Mm. Charlotte Church is quite nice. Uh, yes, uh, I could listen She's to. She's done classical and pop, which I think is great mm. to be able to cross over from classical to pop and then and vice versa. Yeah, all oh, right. And I know you and Holly, you're, you're both into your alternative music, alternative bands. Yeah, um, mm. niche things. I know you used, you used to go to a lot of festivals um, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah, <laughs> 30 years ago. I don't think I'd last a festival now. I wouldn't <laughs> last, all one, I in a hotel. last one now at 36, <laughs> let alone <laughs> 46. Or, um, Holly, you, you, festivals is your life, isn't it? And, yep. and interviewing, meeting new bands, up and coming bands, you know, and yep. some of them are very niche, aren't they? And um, Yeah. 
had some interesting bands on my show. Mm-hmm. And you're so, still yeah. you're still recovering from download, aren't you? At the download, moment, download was three festival. weeks ago. I think I'm still post download at the moment. Mm. I'm still pretty. Mm. Yeah. Mud, alcohol, mm. crowd surfing. Boots to the <laughs> face. That's about it. <laughs> face on my heart. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, obviously, congratulations. Um, th uh, this, uh, J Josh Barry of East Cows is 29 years old, Bournemouth University. He said he was overwhelmed by how many people came to support him and hope it can be the springboard, springboard to get this out there for more people to learn about this remarkable story. And also his remarkable story, how he spent two years writing this radio documentary, um, obviously without the use of his uh, hands. And if you have news uh, that we should be talking about, uh, then do contact us on our email talk at that solent.com or send us a tweet using hashtag TalkSolent. Back with you again very shortly for more fascinating subjects.